Hello developers, let's start developing. Today we're gonna take on the task for the 6th of April 2024, which means that WrestleMania 40 is just around the corner, it will happen in a few hours, I'm quite excited about that, but that's beside the point, I'm gonna pass my time by doing some programming and solving this thing. Well, what happens is that we have a string, it has some parentheses, and we make, need to make sure that those parentheses are valid. So, the goal is to remove the minimum amount of parentheses so that the string is valid. This is not a very easy problem. In essence, it's a very, very complicated to see if everything matches and lines up. And you can obviously see that behavior like this will be useful in tools like this, basically in our editor, that all the parentheses are matching. Well, in order to do that, our editors mostly use something called uh, lexer and tokenizers and parsers and things like that. So in general, we would need to build a bit of a complicated infrastructure to do this. Fortunately, we have hint number one, especially, and also somewhat hint number two, which basically tell us this is how you solve these specific problems. One thing that is common for lexer parsers and whatever is that they are very, very often stack based and token based. So here we basically have our tokens. Each of the character is a specific token. We need, don't need to make any sense of this. And we are told one thing that is very obvious in hindsight. Each prefix of a balanced parenthesis expression has a number of open parentheses greater than or equal to the number of closed. Which means you need to encounter an open parenthesis before you encounter a closed parenthesis. So let's see what happens here. So we have zero closed parent open parenthesis, one open, two open, one closed, two open, one closed two open, two closed. And when we get to this one, we have two open, three closed. So this one has to go. And if we remove this parenthesis, we're done. The same thing here, zero open, one closed, you're gone. Zero open, <coughs> uh, one open, one closed. That's okay. Uh, now we have Two open, <clears throat> two closed, one open. So one open, two closed. So this is also an invalid. But moving forward, as soon as we encounter this, we're gonna throw it out. So we're gonna have our solution. And in this case, these two are invalid basically. So we're gonna throw them out. And then we're left with this string. According to the first rule that I said, the number of open parentheses has to be bigger than the number of closed. This string is fine, but is it a valid string, valid parentheses expression? No, it's not, because the shoe can be on the other foot. From this side, the number of closed parentheses has to be bigger or equal to the number of open parentheses. So, by that token, these are also invalid. We could have such a case maybe even here, if we had this here. This means that this is also an invalid character and it should be removed as soon as we get to it. Actually, let's add that as an example. It's always nice to have more examples and have this. So those need to be removed. So let's code this. I will as always rename this as input. And then we have, actually I'm gonna leave it as S since I will want to do this. Yeah, let's split it on the empty string. So now instead of using a string as an array, we have an array that we're going to use as an array. It's 
feels better to me. It doesn't really make any difference. We can just use our input string as an array because you can do a indexing into a string. Because to be honest, strings don't really exist. They are always an array of characters. And we're going to have our stack, which is not going to be a number of this. It's going to be an array of strings, actually. And let's have an index that we're going to start with. So we're going to do this. Open is 0, close is 0. And yeah, something like this. I'll remove the body. I'll rewrite it from scratch. So we have our index. While it's less than the input length, we're going to do something very, very similar to this. Let's take care, uh, see what it's doing. We have our current character. That's the part of the input that's inside the index. If it's not one of these two, if it's not of interest, let's rewrite it in a different way because I kind of like it that way better. Let's get the most of the cases out of the way immediately. Because most of the cases will be neither an open or a closed parenthesis, it will be our character. So if current car is not that and the current car is not that, then add it to the stack increase the index and continue on. So that case is solved. So now we have two more cases. I don't like using else's. I might prefer using continues because I know that the loop has to, has to end there. So if the current character is an open parenthesis and now we're doing the prefix scan. So we're going to do two scans. We're going to do a prefix scan and that will get rid of all the closed parentheses that are in invalid places. But that does nothing for the open parentheses. And in the video, the, my characters might be switched around, but you get the point. So we do nothing about the open parentheses on the first pass. We just increase the number and put it on the stack. Otherwise, if so, we have three different options, either it's something not interesting, open or closed. So for the closed one, we're going to increase our closed. And if open is bigger than the close or equal, equal is nice. Then we push that thing onto the and I will add a few more lines here. I prefer having more lines of code and having simpler code, even if it's longer than having terribly terse and no terribly complicated code. So this is all of the case. This is all that will happen if the current character is an open uh, parenthesis. Otherwise, close increases is open is bigger or equal to close because in this case when we get to here we have 2 and 2 that's okay then we push that character onto our stack otherwise we just don't and whatever happens we increase our index plus one well we can put in a continue here but you don't really need it sometimes i put it for the sake of completeness sometimes i don't because it's the end of the loop but that's about it so let's see what happens if we say return stack dot join this will return it back into a string and let's just return that as a result so this should take care of all the closed parentheses characters. It should do nothing for the open parentheses characters. So let's see what happened. Test case one passed. Test case two 
failed. This didn't survive. Why didn't that survive? Oh. We have a bug because we're incrementing the close counters even on those that we pass through. So I actually made that exact bug when I was counting this string. So it's getting one closed, one open, and then so this gets removed because it's the first closed, this gets removed because doesn't get removed because we don't care of that about that. And this says now you have two closed and one open. No, we only have one closed because we threw this away. So we're gonna change it a bit. So if open is bigger, strictly bigger than close, since now we're gonna be increment, incrementing close, we're only incrementing the close counter if we actually use that close parenthesis. Otherwise, we, we don't, we're not touching it. So when we encounter this thing, we throw it away and we say zero. Then we say one, that's good. And here it's a one one case. And if it's one one, everything is fine. So the second uh, test case should pass and it did. And the third one should fail because we actually did nothing about the open parenthesis. And in the same case, we are actually have a hanging open parenthesis here. But and now I will just Redo this code again. So I will actually, yeah, let's use two stacks. So this is our forward stack. And I'm going to define another back stack, backward stack. That's the actual, where the actual result will come. And index will be the length of the first stack minus one, the forward stack, open is again zero, close is again zero, and now let's copy this over and change it. While index is bigger than zero, bigger there or equal to zero, let's not forget that, the current chart, this stays the same, only is the backward going stack, the backward going stack, the backward going stack. If it's not, we are decrementing that, decrementing that, and decrementing that. This might have been easier without the continuous in this specific case, but I'm quite okay with that. If the current character is the close parenthesis, now we are working with the close parenthesis first because we will always encounter we should always encounter them first. So if that happens, then close is increased, add it, move that way, continue. Otherwise, if the current character is the open parenthesis, that's the weird one. If close is bigger than open then and only then open is increased and that is pushed and that is that. So I think we're gonna get the exact wrong result this time. Let's see, except in the third case that should pass and it didn't. And this is the correct kind of, this is not, and this is not. Because what we need to do is we need to reverse it. There is a brand new method to reverse, it, but nobody knows that because that's in the new JavaScript. Let's reverse it and return it, and we still have some issues. 
A, B, C. We made the boo boo somewhere because I have no idea how anybody got here. <sighs> and as always, when you're copying code, make sure that you actually change it. Because we use the input characters instead of the actual characters and we're still doing something like that somewhere because we didn't save the file let's see now it's okay it works better when it's saved to be honest i'm not quite happy with this code i might rewrite it without all the continues because we have it twice once it was great but twice it's just too many moving parts but if it works and this will work relatively fast because it's using a linear scan it's all fan we're passing once through the array and once more through the array so there's quite a bit of code but you see most of it is in simple and uh, understandable chunks it says that it passed the test case and let's submit it and see if we manage to boo boo on a test case that's always an option with lit code but not this time and it's actually very slow i have no idea why maybe i can just use a single stack instead of copying from a stack to stack but it's relatively fast for all of the test cases it's just 105 milliseconds we can have this faster but i think it's fast enough anyway that's all for now mash the buttons uh, like subscribe comment whatever and keep developing